Fright, how death occurs and how the soul is placed in the body of an infant. A great deal of work that goes on with the living is done by men and women on our structure who work constantly and all the time to guide those in the living world and to see to it not that after death of the physical body, the other body is taken back to the right rest plane where that particular person belongs and where the greatest number of his or her clan or family are to be found. This is the best way to ensure some sort of happiness for everyone. However, apart from actual people who work to help the living, as do we, and we also are unseen and unknown to the writer of this book, there are billions upon billions of microbes of all sorts and types, not only on one structure, but on several, totally unseen, not only to you, but to us also. These specks of life have important work to do. Once programmed, they will go off, seek and find, and do what they must without cessation, until they begin to break down and get tired. Remember, nothing, nothing at all can last forever. Everything changes constantly. Within the human body itself, there are millions of these minute specks of life, working to help to keep the body alive. They are also to be found in the bodies of animals. Once the physical body dies, wherever it might be, and if it is not detected by fond relatives and friends, the body itself releases microbes quite automatically. This is all part of the death process, and these will find their way to a sort of central control system, which works the same for every living planet. This sets up an automated plan that will bring the living to their proper resting place. Very often loved ones, long since dead and known to the dying, are sent to help them to make the ends of their lives easier and less painful and lonely. In birth, it acts in much the same way. Once an ovary has successfully mated with a male sperm, the female body emits millions of these unseen microbes which find their way unaided to the right part of the control system. These microbes are all different. They are composed of the skin cells and scraps of bone tissue for each individual living person. And the way in which the womb works inducing life fits into the complex network which creates life for each planet. These different microbes are emitted constantly until the right moment for the fusion of the soul or entity has come. This is generally at around 12 to 14 weeks after successful fertilization has taken place and the little embryo is ready to receive the entity. In the meantime, other microbes programmed in the vast computer that governs life on a planet work to find the right soul for each birth. Once this is done, these special microbes will carry the minute speck of the soul that is the form which we all take when we are without a body back to the forming embryo in the new host mother. The extraordinary way that the soul then begins to work on the living flesh for both structures is not fully understood, but work it does to restore the unborn born person to life in a body as nearly right for the inner entity as can be achieved with the material available. Only humanity on the living planet can produce and create new life and new bodies, and we hope in the future with this knowledge the living will give greater thought to the sorts of children they will bring into the world. An intelligent look at an ant colony, a beehive, and many other forms of life similar will help to show the reader that nature produces itself over and over again. Even the hu human body is pre-programmed and full of microbes which was, must work constantly, each to, <coughs> each to its special task to keep the body functioning with, with information from the brain which is, after all, the powerhouse and central control system of the body. Humanity itself is pre-programmed to a lesser or greater extent, and everyone has his or her place in the scheme of things. Only a very few are ever intelligent enough to run large organisations or to govern, no matter what race they belong to. We hope to show in these dictations from the other side that this is what they are, and how the scheme, the, the scheme of things is meant to work, but sadly rarely does. This is my comment. In the dictation above, it talks about the importance of microbes within the human body and also those of higher animals. 
These microbes in life have been little songbirds and different types of insects and many other creatures. In life they have a physical and an electrical body and like us an everlasting soul. It is this soul or entity that is often used as a messenger within the human body or in that of other higher animals. As already mentioned, they report to the central command of creation when a person or a creature is about to die, or when an embryo is ready to receive the right soul within the new mother and so begin another physical life. My father's father, my paternal grandfather, smoked like a chimney but remained active till about a week before his death, without appearing to be suffering from anything particular. He suddenly put himself to bed, sleeping for long periods and eating little. My grandmother, who was with him <coughs> at the time, had gone in to ask him if he wanted tea or something to eat. Unaware of, his pre of her presence, he suddenly looked up into the corner of the room and said, Mum, Queenie, and then died. His mother and sister had come to collect him. I've had other patients who have described seeing relations when they were near death, ex having a near-death experience. This proves that death, when it comes, is not a frightening experience and other com others come to help us. Another interesting story I have deals with the microbes in our body. For this reason, we should avoid taking antibiotics of any kind unless absolutely necessary. Also, our farmers and vets likewise should never give them unless absolutely vital. There is no such thing as a prophylactic antibiotic. However, things can go wrong. In another dictation, it talks about how there is an electrical charge or life force within the human body of a young person that will be steadily diminishing for up to three days after the death after death has occurred. An old person who has been steadily declining and probably in a coma for several days or hours will have very little life force remaining in the physical body at the time of death. But there are, as already stated, billions of souls and other creatures constantly at work in many different capacities running the universe. Some of these are sent to collect the different entities that are part of the machinery of the human body. We are all like a citadel of creatures. We have all been revolted when we've seen the number of skin mites and other creatures that exist on our skin, even after we've come fresh from a bath or a shower. We now know about the numerous microbes that exist within us that form part of our body's soul's messenger system within the universe, and also that those form part of our immune system and many others. Many of us would be surprised to know that our different white cor blood corpuscles have been in other incarnations employed as amoeba in many other environments, and a more, more advanced form could evolve into one or other of the many jellyfish that live in the sea. However, almost always these many of and varied entities that live and work within the human body have to be collected up by those whose job it is to deal with the dying. But very occasionally there are mistakes. In the summer of 1976, the Daily Mail carried a small story about an unfortunate young woman who was walking along a New York street and suddenly, for no apparent reason, burst into flames and was consumed in seconds, leaving nothing but her clothes and a small amount of grease on the pavement. There were also several stories at the back of a non-fiction book by Dennis Wheatley that dealt with this phenomena. Among these stories was an account by a Catholic priest. He had been praying in the vestry of his church when he looked down and saw flames coming through his cassock out over one thigh. He beat them out, only for them to begin again. This time he ran from the church into the vicarage, still beating his leg. Once inside the flames stopped, then he noticed that his cassock was not burned, but he had a scar on his thigh ever afterwards. The explanation for this strange happening is that in both the above cases, the microbes within a dead body had not been adequately dealt with. Consequently, knowing that they could not exist without their host body, they rushed to find another. But both the priest and the unfortunate American woman had their own microbes. So once another group tried to enter their body, they fought them off and the energy generated, killed the poor woman and badly shot the priest. Doubtless both had been near a recently dead body and hopefully the poor woman knew very little about what had happened to her. So that's that one, and the only the other one I wanted to do was about abortion.